Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when I feel like it o'clock, and uh, I'm Pearl of Wisdom. You're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, and it's in the morning. I just had woke up around seven, you know, had some breakfast, went for my nap, and uh, um, I got about seven or eight more naps to go today. But I thought I'd fill some time in here. I, 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 I. I don't know what's going on out there as far as um, the Oilers are concerned. Um, you, I don't know what other people are offering for uh, depth on their roster for forwards, but they've got about $4 million in cap room. And uh, they could probably make some more space in some areas if they absolutely had to. What I don't understand is you got Nikita Gusev out there. Now... I have a feeling that Vegas is really pushing the envelope with Gusev. They own his rights, and Nikita says he wants $4 million a year for two years. And as it stands, I don't think Vegas has much to, um, I don't think they have much leverage except just telling him to go home. That's pretty much it. He wants to play. Uh, he had 82 points in the KHL last year, highest in the league. Like, those are Panarin-like numbers, or more so. He's only 27 years old. This He is a huge talent, absolutely huge. And I think the others should go for him. They, this is He's putting up superstar-like numbers, and I know, okay, is that going to translate into... The uh, NHL. Well, it's certainly, it's so far, every, pretty much every forward that's put up those kind of numbers that were sort of on the younger side that have come over from the KHL have panned out. Um, there's been guys that have put out like just less than point a game numbers and stuff that haven't. Um, I'm trying to think of a few, but uh, off the top of my head, it's not coming. I should do some homework on this. But just about every one, like for instance, the Florida Panthers. See, now you're making me work. I'm going to look up the Florida Panthers. Dad and off had the similar kind of numbers, and look what he's doing 50, 60 points a year. I just mentioned Panarin, and he's even put up more points than both of them. So, what would I give? Again, like I said, Edmonton has enough cap room to give them the $4 million for two years. Two years at $4 million. Try him out for a year and then sign an extension with the motherfucker. You got, uh, if he can put up, if he can put, well, even if he doesn't put up Panarin type numbers, can you believe that in the time that I switched off and went back from Florida, I forgot Dadunov's name? I cannot remember that fucking guy's name. Even if he puts Dadunov type numbers up which are like 50, 60 points a year for the Oilers, if he's playing with McDavid, like if you were to take Dadanoff and put him on in a line with McDavid and Dreisaitl, you think he's going to put up a few more than 50 or 60 points? I do. So, saying all this, what am I willing to give? I'm willing to give my first next year. I'm willing to give my first next year. I might even be willing to give Peyton Harvey. And people are saying, oh, that's too much. Tell me where else you're going to get that kind of a talent right now. Are we just going to sit on our hands all fucking day? You That first round pick next year, yeah, sure. If we don't take anybody and we stick with what we've got with Grandland and stuff like that, maybe we go to Vegas and help them out, free up some cap space, and we can go with, uh, what's his name there? I'm going to go back. John back here again to Vegas, making me freaking work, guys. Jeez. Cody Eakin. We can offer Cody a second round pick for Cody Eakin and uh, $3.8 million in one year, and then maybe be able to sign him again. Are we really going to be a contender? Are we going to do that? Isn't it time that we take educated risks here? Gusev has put numbers up in the KHL that make him look like a solid, solid 70-point player. So why fuck around? Offer the first. Maybe you just get away with the first. It, it, this, you're taking away their cap room. And 
Um, Vegas has doesn't have. I don't believe Vegas has first next year. Let me check this out. Yeah, they do have a first next year, but they've given up a lot of their uh, for for a team that just came in the league. They've given up a lot of their prospects to get Pacioretty, Stone, stuff like that. They they're capped out. They've got everybody pretty much they need. Um. Now they could also just be playing a ploy here. They could be just tr trying to push it, so they don't have to buy out Cody Eakin or trade William Carlson. Not William Carlson. Uh, the other Carlson. Ah, I forget his name. Anyways, you know, buy out buy out Cody Eakin or something of that nature. And um, th next year they got to sign uh, John Merrill and Holden. Um, they've got to add to their defense. Right now, I believe they only have five of their defensemen signed. So, I mean, they've got a lot of work to do, and I think it's quite possible that they would be happy with a first-round pick for him next year. They could look at it as the Oilers could shit the bed like they have for the last 11 years. But I believe if we get a talent like Gustav, there's a really good chance we could make the playoffs next year um, with – some of that, with especially if Bouchard comes out and plays the way he, he can, Larson has a better year. Um, I like Tippett, I, and I know a lot of guys don't. They didn't want some old school guy, but he never coached like an old school guy. Tippett coached, though. To me, when I watched when he was with uh, the Arizona, he coached with what he had in his lineup, and he was very progressive. Um. We could also buy out Chris Russell if we had to, because we don't really need him. Um, there's lots of things we could do even to make some more space. But Clefbaum's back healthy. Larson um, is uh, has a better year. Darnell Nurse is just is improving all the time. I I'm thinking that we're going to be a better team next year, but we need some offense in that lineup. And uh, if we have Tyler Benson come up and fill our middle six, um, and Granlin's going to fill our middle six, I, I like it, our team, a little better than last year, but a guy like Gusev would put us over the top. Um, I think we should just go for it. That's what i got to say about that. Tell me what you think, boys and girls, because I love your letters. Send me your letters. I read them every day. I go down to the mail room. I grab my sack of letters and I throw them on the letter table and we do a little jig and we jump around and we have fun and there's much glee. So send us, send me the letters or write them down at the bottom here. That's my full 42% boys and girls. That's all I have to give. I need to go for a nap. Have a good day. Oh, subscribe and then get the My, uh, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace. Don't forget that. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.